Today we'll look at color theory in relation to art. Color is something that which connects all the visual practices. Color is visual, right? Unlike drawing, which captures the world, which represents the imagination in a particular way, color creates certain impacts on the viewer. So when it comes to color, the object that we see, the color of the object is related to the way we see. The color is not limited to the object, but the operation of color and color theory is linked with the viewer also. It is not only the object, but also the viewer. So let us look at the definition of color. How can we define color? Color, a visual attribute of things that results from the light that emit or transmit or reflect, right? The property possessed by an object of producing different sensations on the eye as a result of the way it reflects or emits light. So what does it mean? It means the color that we see of an object, for example, a red pot. The red pot emits the color red when the light falls on it, right? And that emission of the light, the red light from that pot is received by the eye. So the, the red color of the pot, the red pot is received by the eye. So in the process of observ observing the color, in the process of uh, receiving the color, both the object as well as eye, our eye is linked. So the operation of the eye, the physiological operation of the eye, so what we, how the eye receives the color, the red light of the pot, the red color, and then how it sends to the brain. So this is called the physiological operation of the eye. So when it comes to color, color impacts our brain, color impacts our emotional and psychological condition. So which is why color plays an important role in our daily life as well as in the context of the visual art. Color, again, if we further kind of go a uh, little ahead and then try more to understand, the color of an object depends on both the physics of the object, which I was mentioning, in its environment and the characteristics of the perceiving eye and brain. So when it comes to the perception of color, both the object as well as the eye are important. For example, if the same object is placed in the inside, in the room, it will have one particular kind of a color. For example, red, red pot, if you take the same red pot, if you place a red pot in the room, because of the light of the room, the color of the red pot is a particular hue, right? We'll see what is hue a little later. And if you place the same red pot outside in the sunlight, you will perceive it with a different intensity, with a different color, right? So color of the object changes according to the environment, according to the way the light is falling on the object. So this particular principle of the color theory is being used by the artists from the 19th century extensively and we'll try to see through paintings how they have used it. So for this understanding of color and color theory, the 19th century scientists, color theoreticians and physicists really contributed a lot to our understanding of color and color theory. Thomas Young, who is a very important uh, scientist and physician, uh, who proposed the tricolor theory, the first three colors, the primary colors, and we'll look at what, is prim what are primary colors. And the other uh, important person is James Clerk Maxwell and Hermann von Helmholtz. So these three scientists become very important for us to understand color theory. And in the 19th century, these phys physicians, uh, these color theorists really have contributed to, uh, as well as influenced the artists. The artists have uh, referred to their contributions, referred to their theories, and they formulated their own ways of painting, their, their own usage of color and color combinations. So these three are important figures. And what we see now is the color wheel, the 
early form of color wheel, what we can say. And this gets more and more, more, more complicated as we go ahead. So these are primary colors. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So you have the, the primary colors. What are primary colors? Primary colors are the colors which are not formed by the combination of any other colors. They are the first colors, primary colors, which is why they are called primary colors. And when you combine two primary colors, you get another color which is called a secondary color. So from, from the combination of primary colors, we get secondary colors. And the secondary colors are green, orange, and purple. So when you mix yellow and blue, you get green. When you mix red and yellow, you get orange. When you mix blue and red, you get purple. So you get variety of colors by combination. So, but the secondary colors are produced by, by mixing, by combining two primary colors. So we get now six colors from the first three primary colors. So uh, after the secondary colors, what you have is tertiary colors. So tertiary colors are formed by mixing three primary colors or three secondary colors. So what you have is on the screen is a very complicated uh, color wheel with primary colors and secondary colors and tertiary colors. And when you form, when, when you have a color wheel formed with all these colors, what you have in the color wheel is two types of colors, two types of colors that impact our mood. One is the warm color category, another is the cold color category. And these two categories are very important when we try to understand the psychological, emotional impact that the colors would produce. As we know, warm colors would produce a sort of an agitated uh, you know, mood or excited mood or it suggests anger. And on the other hand, cool colors are more calmer. You, it calms down your emotional, psychological sensations. So we'll look at how these colors are used a little later by the artist. So yeah, tertiary colors is a combination of three colors. That may be three primary colors or three secondary colors and yes so when we look at color and uh, you have different types of color like in the color itself for example if you take one color you have different varieties different variations and gradations in color right so you have some definitions here something like hue what is hue for example if you take the same color red Red, we have different variations, right? You have deep red, you have lighter red, you have something like blood red, right? So hue is the particular variation that emits a particular wavelength of that pigment, right? For example, if you have a darker red, that emits a particular wavelength which is different from a lighter red, okay? so. Color may be same, it may be red, but within red you have different hues. It goes with any color, that may be green, that may be blue, like for example, if you take sky blue, the sky blue changes from morning to evening, the color of the sky changes from morning to evening. It is the same, same sky, but the color of the sky changes and the color doesn't change, the blue doesn't change, but what changes he is the hue, hue of the sky. So why does it change? It is a very good example actually. Why does it change? It changes because of the change of the light, the intensity of light. So another subcategory within the context of color is lightness, right? So the lightness and the darkness of color. So the example that we took initially about the pot, the red pot, uh, if you put it in the interior, in, inside a room, you have a particular kind of uh, intensity of color, right? Which is slightly darker than if you put it 
outside in the open light it becomes lighter right so you have two variations according to the light that is falling on it as well as that is reflected by the red pot by the object right so another important uh, uh, category is saturation saturation is the kind of level that that moves from the neutral to the brilliance of the color right so uh, we know that uh, if people who use computers people who work on digital uh, softwares would know it very well like how to attain the saturation how the color attains its intensity for example the dull color the same color the red blue or green or any other color you take the color is dull it is unsaturated right if it is bright and it is if it is brilliant and bright that is saturated so saturation is that level of the color where the gray is removed where the dullness is removed that is saturation and you have other variations that you get within the color called something like tint how do you get tint tint is one of the variations of the hue one of the variations of the color you you get tint when you mix white to a color for example if you get if you if you mix white to red you get pink pink is nothing but a tint of red right if you mix white to the darker blue you get a lighter blue right so a lighter blue is the tint of uh, we call it as tint of the blue and another is tone how do you get tone you get tone by mixing gray color you take any color and you mix gray you get the tone of the color that may be blue green whatever color you take so we use this in our uh, everyday usage that you know the tone of a color the tone the tonality you know so tone is nothing but the mixing of gray right so for example if a pot is placed inside the room it acquires it is it acquires a different tone because the light is less so the grayness of the inside grayness of the room becomes uh, makes the color more darker so it is a darker tone that you get when you place the pot inside the room another aspect is shade you get shade when you mix black to any color right so you mix uh, black to red a little amount of black to red you get shade you get maroon right you get a shade of red you get any shade of any color by mixing black right another aspect is value right how light or dark color is the value of color is defined or known by seeing its its lightness or darkness what is the value the higher intensity value or the lower intensity value it it is the value that which is linked to again the idea of hue now we have different color schemes now we are coming to visual art what are the different kinds of color schemes that we have and how artists use them right one is achromatic color achromatic color is that where you don't have any color that which is to put it straight it is black and white and grays where you don't have any color but you have black gray and white so by using black gray and white you create something you paint something and that is called achromatic color scheme right another is monochromatic color monochromatic color is by painting with one color if you make a painting if you make an image with one color and as we have just saw that one color color can have many variations if you mix white if you mix gray if you mix black you get hues of one color you get you get tints of one color shades of one color and tones of one color so by mixing uh, gray white and black you get different shades and tones of one particular color so if you do this this particular process it is a monochromatic 
painting or a monochromatic image. So what is chromatic? Chromatic is nothing but color. You know, chroma is nothing but color. It means color. So let us see two examples of achromatic as well as monochromatic. This is achromatic uh, a painting, a, a, an example for achromatic painting. And I'm sure you are aware of this great painting. It's a huge mural that Picasso did in 1930s when Spain was bombarded by bombs, right? So this is a painting that he painted as a response to the war, as a response to the war on Spain. So which is why you can see it is, there's a lot of violence, it's very expressive, and it is his post-Cubist life that he's painting I mean, in the context of his career, he, he completed his cubistic experiments. So this is a work where we get to see his, uh, his experimentations come together in a large painting. It's a large mural that he painted. Another is, as you can see on screen, it is uh, an example for monochromatic color, uh, color scheme. So this is uh, again Picasso, Pablo Picasso, an old beggar and a boy, right? So he's uh, using blue here and if you know about Picasso's uh, uh, life, you will know that before uh, getting into a very bright period called pink period, he was painting in blue period. This particular time period was categorized as blue period where he used extensively the blue color and different shades and tints and different hues of blue color. So this is one example, uh, one of the examples where you have uh, all the blue shades and tints are used. And what mood do you have here? The mood is depressing maybe, the mood is sadness, the mood is not exciting, not happier, not bright, right? So. Uh, this is a monochromatic, but it also can be used as uh, a cool color schema. We'll see some more examples later, but if you can remember this as an example for the cool colors, the scheme of cool colors in the, in the uh, uh, color wheel. Next is complementary colors. Complementary colors are nothing but contrast colors. Complementary colors can be seen opposite to each other in the color wheel. Any color, any two colors that are opposite to each other in the color wheel can be considered as complementary colors. For example, red and green, right? Red is a complementary color to the green. When you place red and green together, when you juxtapose them, they really react very fast. They really kind of create a contrast effect for our eyes. Similarly, violet and yellow. And let us see a few examples how the complementary colors are used by the artist. And this is a very famous example by uh, Vincent van Gogh. It's a very famous painting. And look at the way he is using yellow for the um, canopy of the cafe and the blue sky up there. So by placing two complementary colors, he is creating a very excited environment, though it is a night. So this is one example of using complementary colors. This is another example by Van Gogh. It is sower. And look at the way the blue, the yellowish orange and yellow are sort of juxtaposed to create a luminous, a bright and exciting color scheme. And Van Gogh is the artist who, uses, who, who used yellow and blue extensively, this particular combination of complementary colors, Van Gogh used extensively and you can see uh, in his paintings how different uh, ways he has used them. This is another artist, a Baroque artist, Vermeer. And here it is slightly complicated. He is using something called split complementary. For example, you see she is wearing a blue uh, skirt, the, it is called the milkmaid and she's pouring milk and you have the light coming from the window, it's a soft light and that light is litting up the entire environment and she's wearing a yellow, greenish yellow top and 
greenish yellow top is not an exact complementary to the blue right so yellow would be a complementary but this particular color that he is using greenish yellow is not a, an exact complementary but it is called a split complementary which is a one value down or one value up so here it is one value down to balance that further he is using a bright orange for the pot from which she is pouring the milk right so here the artist is using split complementary one that which is one value down to yellow and to balance that he is using the orange for the pot so here he is creating a very interesting combination of colors and creating a visual interest by playing with the contrast by playing with the complementary value of the colors otherwise we can also see black and white as complementary colors black and white complementing each other and we know we use it regularly black and white like black as opposite to white so black and white uh, uh, also work as complementary colors they create complementary effect another uh, effect another aspect is analogous colors analogous colors are uh, colors that are falling together in the color wheel which harmonize so analogous colors create harmony in the painting right if you read it an analogous color scheme is any three adjacent primary secondary or tertiary colors so on the color wheel so what happens is for example you take yellow uh, yellow green and then green so they fall one after another that creates a sense of harmony in the color scheme when you look at a painting or when you look at an image where analogous color scheme is used if you look at this color scheme here by paul cesar cesar is a very important artist in the context of western modern art who painted extensively still lives and landscapes and this is one of his landscape examples where he is using if you look at the bluish greens and the greens and the yellows so they fall almost close to each other in the color wheel so this is an example of analogous color scheme so there is something called color triad right so color triad is an interesting uh, idea color triad is something that which uh, can be formed by drawing an equilateral triangle an equilateral triangle on the color wheel the three color colors on the color wheel divided with the gap of three colors if you look at this uh, slide where you have uh, greenish yellow yellow green you have orange uh, uh, the other tertiary color and you have the purple the pur bluish purple right the just take three colors you have three colors in between uh, between the equilateral triangle the points of the equilateral triangle on all the sides on all the three sides the three points that the equilateral triangle is formed you have in between two points you have three colors for example you take the reddish orange and the greenish yellow between the reddish orange and greenish yellow you have yellow orange and yellow orange so these three colors so this is called color triad and uh, this creates again very exciting color scheme very interesting color scheme like this for example here you have it is not a harmonious color scheme but you have a very uh, it creates a sense of contrast but at the same time it is not the contrast that you saw in van gogh for example but here you have the colors used <coughs> the from the points of the color triad so which is why you have orange on the right side the small hut and the reflection of the hut in the water and on the other side you have these boats and the reflection of the boats so you have blue orange green and this yellowish uh, orange right so this combination creates a very interesting and very exciting color scheme so it excites the eye it is not a matter of harmony or it is not a matter of complementarity but it is a kind of a combination that excites your eye now as we have seen in the color color wheel we have warm colors 
and we have cool colors and let us see warm colors first warm colors in the most general terms are related to the yellow red side of the color wheel right or the color chart they attract attention and generally perceived as energetic or exciting right so you take red red is something that can be seen you know from uh, from a distance you take yellow you take you know the range of colors that fall between red and yellow and you can see that it really excites our eyes it really energizes you know so red would really you know uh, excite you it can run energy inside your body right so warm colors has this tendency of excitement and energy so which is why we can see uh, uh, revolutionary colors are red this is an example uh, by Vincent van Gogh and here you can see unlike let us say the earlier example where he was using complementary colors here he is using only the warm colors where you can see different uh, different kinds of yellows he is using different hues of yellows and this is a very good example to also understand the definition of hue you know you have different kinds of yellows here yellow is one but within yellow as a general category of color you have different kinds of yellows and yellow is a warmer color and this is the warm color scheme so this is a very good example for us to understand the warm color scheme and this is also an example of still life just to inform you a little more this is called still life where you have an object in front of you and you are painting that object and Van Gogh painted many many still lives like this and many sunflowers particularly this is another example of warm color scheme where as you can see here it is filled with reddish orange and orange and you don't have any kind of the cool color or blue or green or any sort of cool color here so this is another very good example of uh, warm color schema and this is by Sarah Quayle it's again another still life with oranges right so now we'll, let's look at cool colors what are cool colors cool colors on the other hand sit on the blue green side of the color wheel they are generally perceived as soothing and calm so opposite to warm colors what the warm colors do cool colors do the opposite of it which is soothing your, your senses and calming your senses this is an example of cool colors this is Claude Monet water lilies and he painted many water lilies like this and to remind you Monet is a 19th century artist is a late 19th century artist who was very closely and deeply influenced by the color theories the color theories that we were talking initially where how it kind of opened up the understanding of how the light and the color are interlinked and how the color and the perception of the eye is interlinked so that theory was uh, influential for Monet in terms of choosing colors in terms of creating his own color schema in terms of his own paintings using colors in, in his paintings and this is an example where as you can see here the light is very much there falling on the water lilies and there is a reflection on the top of the trees in the water and all together create a very soothing and calm sensation calm experience for our eyes right it is because of the kind of color schema that he is using which is cool color schema this is another example of cool color schema Karen Danwood uh, looking towards Switzerland right so this is a sort of a hillscape where he is using all blues and different kinds of blues right and you have a sort of a greenish yellow but which is not warm in effect which is cooler in effect so this is also another good example of the cool color schema you have another example of cool color schema and I'm sure you can now experience a different mood altogether than what you have seen in Van Gogh uh, uh, as well as the later oranges right this opens up a sense of coolness a sense of vastness 
and a sense of calmness when you look at this painting. So color is something that which is not just a, uh, an element of painting or an element of visual art, but color is very important in the sense it sort of creates a dialogue with your senses. It involves your senses and it helps you to involve yourself with painting or with visual image and it kind of creates a sort of an emotional contact sometimes. So color is a very important element and which, uh, and which is why uh, color plays a very important role in the psychology. So color uh, there is also something called color psychology, right? So what kind of color effect that creates on a person and how you can understand the characteristics of that person and the psychology of that person. So color psychology is something that helps us to understand the personality, you know, the, at least a part of the personality of individuals. So like color psychology and you have different emotions, right? So how uh, colors create different kinds of emotions. Something like, for example, we have a few examples here like hope and joy. So yellow and the warm colors are understood as, you know, creating excitement as we, as we discussed, uh, hope and joy. It's, it's pleasure, it is happiness. So this particular color schema Van Gogh is using to kind of generate to kind of produce and give the viewer a sense of hope, a sense of joy about looking at this. So but a sense of hope and joy is not about painting only but it is to kind of create uh, generally in your emotions, in your psychology. So contrast to hope and joy, contrast to yellow, you have this particular color schema which is blue, right, bluish which is sadness and despair, right? So you have hope and joy as a very bright kind of color schema. And you have this color scheme by Pablo Picasso, again, uh, coming from the blue period, because blue period is a time when he was really sad. He was, uh, he did not have money. He was very poor, but he really wanted to paint. He wanted to become an artist. And he was starving and he didn't have money even to buy his art materials. So he was really struggling and in the cold weather of Paris, he was living in a one room with his friend and trying to work, uh, trying to struggle. And it is that period when he was not yet established as an artist, as, as an important artist. It is that period when he was actually undergoing pain himself, sadness himself, you know, of not having money, of starvation. So it is that mood and colors in painting create that mood and artists use colors in such a way that they produce that mood, that sensation, that emotion. So unlike uh, Van Gogh's uh, hope, joy and the, and the pleasure oriented color scheme of yellow, you have here blue, bluish color scheme which creates a sense of sadness, a sense of pain and a sense of despair. So what happens when you look at a painting by the artist, it reflects the emotional and psychological condition of the artist himself or herself, right? So when you look at the colors, by looking at the colors, you can also understand the mental and the emotional condition of an artist, right? So paintings are not just what you see, paintings are furthermore. They are a lot more than what you see. They can tell you more than what you can visually see if you go on looking at them and if you go on you know, digging, if you go on looking more and more and then trying to understand how things have been arranged and how mood has been created. So this is a very good example of uh, sadness created by using colors and the combination of colors. This is uh, another artist uh, called Andre de Rain. And this is an example of noise and activity, right? So if you look at this, it's a very interesting composition and we can spend a little time on it, where he's using uh, not 
one color scheme, but he he's using a sort of a complementary as well as a sort of a uh, as we can we have seen the triad, the color triad. So these two things he seems to be using here, right? If you look at the background, in the background he is not using any warm color. You look at the background, he is using yellowish green and he is using blue, the bright blue and in the back it looks more bluish because uh, the bridge as well as the sky, it kind of becomes bluish because of the atmospheric perspective, right? Because of the, as we can see, when you look at things at a distance, they are sort of, they look hazy and they become slightly bluish. That is because of the atmospheric effect, atmospheric perspective. Uh, when it comes to painting, it is called atmospheric perspective. That kind of helps the object to recede into the space. Anyway, so if you look at this background, uh, is arranged with the cooler colors. And in the foreground, as you can see, he is using warmer colors, the reddish orange, yellow, right? And by doing that, he is creating this sense of noise and the sense of activity right in the foreground, about to leave or that has just come. So what happens when a ship is about to leave or just arrived? People want to just get down or people want to get in. And that noise and that activity and that sense of uh, disturbance, that sense of, uh, you know, uh, activity and the sense of uh, haphazardness, you know. Uh, so that is captured in this, uh, in this image and very interestingly he has captured in this image. And the composition actually is very interesting in the sense, you look at the way the ship is composed, the ship is composed as if it is going inside from the outside, as if you see there is a diagonal, right, it creates a diagonal actually, there is a diagonal movement. If you look at the ship, how it is arranged, it is arranged from the uh, right bottom towards the top left, right. So it creates a, a kind of a diagonal and the diagonal also, unlike a vertical and horizontal composition, the diagonal also itself creates this activity. The diagonal breaks the stability of the composition and it helps create a, a sense of dynamism, a sense of animation. And with that composition, he is using the color scheme which is complementary as well as a color scheme that which is triadic in the color, color wheel, which creates a very excited feeling about this painting. And what we have studied today is the, the color, the color in its various aspects, right? So color in the general world is different, right? But color when it comes to the visual world, the visual art, it needs to be understood that color has different properties. And those properties are not only limited to the visual representation, but they are linked to the viewer. They are linked to the person who is looking at the painting, right? Which is why the designers and the artists choose their colors very calculatedly, right? Because the colors in a design, the colors in an object or a product, they sort of respond or they allow or they invite the viewer or the buyer to respond to that object. So color is a very important aspect in the design and when it comes to visual art, color has uh, an emotional space in the sense it works with the emotions of the viewer. It is not only about the emotions of the artist and how uh, he is creating emotions through color in the painting, but it is also linked with the emotions of the viewer, how the viewer is responding to the painting and what kind of emotional response that the viewer is feeling. So painting apart from representing the nature, apart from representing the imaginative world of the artist, it also kind of opens up a space of interaction and within that space of interaction, you know, Painting and color, color within painting gives 
a world of sensations unlike drawing you know drawing is something that sort of uh, that sort of represents the world that sort of uh, gives shape and form to the imaginative world or the representative world right uh, the it becomes as a kind of abstraction of the rep of, of the real world or the abstraction of the uh, imaginative world but color gives sensations color gives emotions to that abstracted visual world <clears throat> so which is why color is very important and color uh, understanding color and the application of color and uh, a, a choice of color and what kind of mood that you want to create these are very important uh, points one needs to keep in mind as an artist as well as as a viewer thank you yeah so apart from the emotional aspect of the color we have another interesting aspect which is symbolic aspect colors are used uh, symbolically right colors in the context of particularly in the context of uh, religion colors acquire a symbolic value uh, for example you take the byzantine icon painting or you take the christian uh, painting uh, in uh, in the churches particularly or the icons where there are certain set of colors for example the blue you know the purplish blue that uh, madonna wears that the mary wears you know so blue and the background is always yellow right the golden yellow so this particular combination of golden yellow and uh, the blue the purplish blue this combination that uh, like goes on for over centuries and unchanged and because it is embedded with certain symbolic value so symbolically they were understood as divine colors they were understood as heavenly colors and interestingly you see the blue and yellow are complementary colors and when you look at uh, when you look at the mary sitting on the throne holding christ and her halo at the back and if you look at the background the background is this golden yellow and you know this which actually sort of pronounces the figure of the mary very uh, prominently right so the yellow is something that which is not heavy in terms of the gravity of the color right you also have a sense of gravity of colors because you see blue is something which visually has a lot of gravity unlike yellow yellow feels lighter right so which is why you have sky for yellow and which is not a realistic way of using yellow because sky is blue right but yellow is used for the background uh, but uh, for the background and it also assumes uh, a sort of a sky and because it is a divine space because it is the space of mary and christ the colors over here acquires a sense of divine symbolism right so that is uh, one of the examples of color symbolism and if you look at the miniatures if you look at the indian miniatures also you have this color symbolism used extensively and particularly to evoke the seasonal uh, sentiments the seasonal emotions to kind of symbolically evoke seasons okay so uh, for example a color scheme has more yellows in it you have the season would be summer right the color scheme if it gives a sense of coolness and calmness it may be winter or particularly uh, uh, monsoon right so even uh, in the indian context in the particularly in the context of miniature painting you have color symbolism used e extensively and apart from miniatures you also have in tantric painting in tantric painting color becomes a very important component of symbolic value right so it is not uh, the color to represent something but the color is divine in itself in the context of tantric symbolism and another painting we can see is this portrait of giovanni arlonfini arnolfini uh, and his wife and this portrait painted by jan van eyck also has a very cryptic quality cryptic quality because the colors are used symbolically as well as 
with a sense of complementary value. If you look at this painting, it is actually a wedding portrait, right? It is uh, like nowadays we have photographs taken during wedding as a mark of memory, as a mark of documentation, as a mar mark of uh, uh, evidence. So this uh, particular painting also served as a mark of memory, documentation and evidence. But it's very mysterious when you look at this painting. If you look at this painting, Arnolfini is standing straight, a man, uh, he, Arnolfini he was an Italian merchant, very wealthy and he just got married and he's standing there holding his wife, his wife's hand and his wife is wearing a green, lavishly uh, stitched green gown, right? So the green here is not just any green but the green that he used is symbolic to the idea of fertility, right? So there are different kinds of anecdotes or exemptions about this particular woman who is standing the wife of Giovanni because if you look at her her womb I mean her stomach looks as if she is pregnant you know that is one of the assumptions or one of the uh, propositions one of the propositions is no she is not pregnant maybe the gown is like that maybe the gown is uh, stitched in such a way that it looks bigger. But however, uh, this particular moment of marriage and as you see the green here is symbolic to the idea of fertility. And interestingly he is using this uh, uh, complementary scheme of colors and you look at the background, the bed on the uh, just behind the lady, the wife, if you look at the bed it is a very interesting, very bright red, right? Uh, so that contrast, that complements the green that the lady is wearing, right? And the way the light is falling from the window right behind Arnolfini, it, it opens up the entire space and it enlightens the space and the objects in the space and the people in the space, right? And the light here is very soft and the soft light that is falling on the face of Arnolfini, it creates this, it marks the light as if it is a divine light, right? So this light sort of gives a sense of the importance of this particular painting. So this is a very important moment in the life of Arnolfini and <clears throat> it actually shows that importance within the painting. And if you look at, for example, the, uh, uh, the lantern that is hanging, the chandelier on the top, you know, the way the light is litting it up, you know. So it, it creates, and you have one uh, candle, the two candles, and one candle is still lit up, another candle is extinguished, which shows a sense of life is sense of time and if you go back into the painting right in the center you have a convex mirror right a convex mirror which shows the painter painting this particular two figures so it's a very complex painting filled with symbolisms but again with the symbolisms you also have color symbolism here so the entire mood that you have in this painting uh, where Arnolfini is wearing a brownish black garment contrast to that you have a very bright vibrant green complementing the red behind her which creates a sense of mood a sense of symbolism right uh, so the idea of fertility and all so we can see that uh, color is something that which is not only emotionally uh, charged or emotionally uh, intended but it is also used for the symbolic purposes. Thank you.